Hello everyone, um, welcome back to Pulsating Mess. Okay, uh, this part is air- yeah. This area is hard, I, I was able to do like two matches tops, which is obviously making grinding for this sort of stuff really difficult. Um, this will definitely be something I'll have to work on very slowly off screen. Regardless, though, um, I think I would like to start this episode by getting some, uh, getting some, uh, some, some, like, furniture items we haven't quite yet. So let's go ahead and leave. Also, I was looking at this list as well. Um, where is it? What is the Tower of the Mad Queen? <laughs> that kind of sounds like... Okay, that boss we fought last time that I didn't even recognize... That kind of sounds like she would be found in a place called the Tower of the Red Queen. Maybe there are some areas that, like, I haven't done yet that you're supposed to do before this over here. Hmm. <laughs> It kind of got me thinking, maybe I should explore around a bit more first before I, uh, before I, uh, start that area. Or get, uh, farther into that area. Although, then again, playing some areas you're unfamiliar with could be kind of fun as well. I think I decided that I want to try doing, um, the World Library in this episode. I want to start with this. So there's a couple things I still need to do here. Yeah, yeah, the whole sneaky Lincoln thing. Okay, um, where can he be found again? The biography section. I think I have a strategy- okay, I'm gonna save, uh, like, before I do this, actually. Just in case I'm wasting my time here and I still can't do this somehow, I can, uh... I can, I can, like, just back out. So I think how I want to do this... You need to be fast to outspeed it, so obviously we want to go to Bird. Um, Imagination. We're gonna have to give you Grift. Not shake down. And we're gonna want to give you um even more speed. So what is your speed at right now? Two forty. You know we can actually go even fa even faster. Yeah, perpetual motion device. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the biography section. History. You know, a really fun part about like about, like, uh, beating a game like this is that I get to now enjoy all the video essays people have made about it. There's only, like, two videos I've been able to find, though. One is the Nitro Rad video, which is just a review of the demo. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Not here. The other was this, like, other review by a guy, um... Let me look this up, actually. I mean the pulsating mess. Yeah, Spacey Soundy. Th this was a good video. Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass is an underrated classic. Or masterpiece. <laughs> or something like that. Whoops. He talked about some strategies he used in the video, which kind of blew me away. Like, apparently... Apparently his ultimate dealing damage strategy was something along the lines of this right here. Perpetual Motion Device plus Bird. 
Which is something that didn't even occur to me. Like, that totally would work for massive damage. Don't show me the old man book. I notice that always gets you into a battle. There you are. Okay, let's see if we can do this. 68% chance of working. $1,000 ain't nice either. Or ain't bad either. I outspeed him! Okay. That's great to hear. I'll see ya. So I think we bring it to you? Good. That's a good little mechanical puzzle. I quite like that one. Like, try, just to make yourself fast enough. I probably could have done this a lot sooner, but... Yeah, whatever. Okay. What is a wubbly? Let's see if we can find that. Let's go on the, uh... Okay. Wubbly is an enemy encountered in the self-help section. Okay. This seems kind of straightforward. Probably just something I missed when I was uh, going through this place for the first time. I think self-help section is a little farther in, though. I've hit the end. Oh, here we go. What do you want? What? Well, there you are. I have to live like eight turns against you or something? Alright, that's one. <laughs> Do 
this rate's gonna take eight turns. <laughs> That's two. I might- well, I don't know if you have physical or magic attacks, but I might want to... I might want to take off, like, my, my countering stuff. There we go, there's the rainbow. You have physical attacks. That's turn three. Take the rainbow off my list. Uh oh. That's what I was afraid of. Alright, that's four. Five. If you're gonna be attacking, I think I'm gonna, like, just have you, like... I'm gonna taunt you onto Jimmy. That's six. That's seven. That's eight. Wow, that's kind of a wild enemy, though. We'll do one more just to play it safe. Okay. A self-help book. Interesting. I didn't realize that kind of item was available this early. That's kind of cool. Do I need it again? I need 60, okay. The speaker cabinet in Fermata Forest. That's a pretty early game area. Where did I miss that? Switch to Spring at the second statue near where Rubik is. Then walk back to the start of the level and climb the vine rope to your right. That sounds simple enough. Nothing wrong with a good cleanup episode here and then, I guess. How'd I miss that? Okay, then. I 
think we've been to Accelerate Dynamics. Oh god, is this that dungeon I wasn't really a fan of? Well, let's get the Skyscraper in there. Sure. Oh wait, is this new? Oh my god, I think this is new actually. Okay, I guess we are doing a new area in this episode. <laughs> Free coffee. Can you believe it? They really swing for the fences here at Accelerate Dynamics. Back at Shinryu Fish Concern, I bring my own coffee in a thermostat. What is going on with that cat? I'm not used to being around so many rich people, I just married into money. Before Harpley swept me off my feet, I was just a lowly maiden in Legato Castle, so these kinds of things are still uncomfortable for me. Everyone here is so well-dressed. Well, except for the one fellow in the bandages. Pretty sure he's not even a Platinum member. I don't know how he got in, but he looks like he's been through a lot. Oh, hello. If you would have known this was just a coffee and donut affair, I wouldn't have come. It's nice to get out of the house, though. Not to mention we dished Martin for the weekend. We have new NPCs, I kind of want to do this too. I love that even this lane to the game we're getting like funny dialogue with this. I don't really remember that character to be honest, like she's talking like we have met her. Hello, Jimmy. I didn't expect to see any familiar faces here. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that you're a Platinum member. You've been very sensible with your investments. Me? I know my salary is modest, but I've saved everything I can. I was hoping Mr. Grouse would see, uh, see us per personally, but I guess he's too busy. That's okay. I'm gonna get the most out of this e uh, eat and greet that I can. I've already eaten the, a donut the big that's biggest than bigger than me, and I'm trying to take another one back home. Too bad my arms are so tiny. Maybe I can give Miss, uh, Miss Robin a call. She makes so much money that she could have uh, been a Platinum member, but I could never get her to open an account. Aha! I've heard about this shaking habit of yours. You should really not do that to people. It's not reasonable at all. The specter of death follows me wherever I go. <laughs> I am haunted by memories of death, uh, death's icy touch on my shoulder. I know one day I will fall into an abyss so, so deep I will not be able to claw my way out. Would you like me to repeat that? <laughs> The Spectre of Death follows me wherever I go. <laughs> well, I suppose this is the luxury of Platinum membership, huzzah. Now why would you do that to an old woman like me? You're lucky I'm not a sturdy farm girl at heart. I don't make much money nowadays, but I saved a pretty penny over the years. I've got to think about my retirement. My latest piece will be performed by the Shinryu Symphony Orchestra soon. You should give it a listen, and maybe you can tell my brother about it. I think I see him more than you see him more than me. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at the at the thing or at the wiki. Apparently, you can only get in here once you have over a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account. Okay, I guess. <laughs> God, I did not touch that bank bank mechanic in a while. What else is back here, even? I mean, the skyscraper. I know the skyscraper is here. I saw this thing in the Coliseum. We're going to be fighting those things, I think. Oh my god, it's a cubicle farm. I... 
And the game I'm working on right now, there's a cubicle farm dungeon, actually. <laughs> oh, there are enemies here. Yep, there it is. All right, prototype. Uh, this thing is quite dangerous. Oh, this battle music is just like clacking on keyboards. I feel like we've seen that enemy, like, a long time ago, yeah. Get out of here. Oh my god, okay, that video essay I saw, it kind of cleared up something that I didn't quite understand at first. Okay, so this right here, this like plus one attack, plus one magical attack, plus one magical defense, what I thought that was, was I thought it was like, oh, how do I put this? I thought it like gave you plus one of that stat while you're in this form per that level. Like say, for example, if I'm the bear, I'm going to have... 45 more attack as long as I'm in this form. Apparently that's not how this works. How this works is like if you get a level up while you are in this form, you gain one of that stat to yourself permanently. I never really picked up on that. I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I know I played as the bear probably the most out of any character in this game, so I don't think I really screwed myself over too much. But that is quite interesting. Heck, now that I know that, I kind of want to play as Punch Tanaka more. I just got to get um, that group hit onto him, because I really like that move. I have items I can revive. If I need to revive that badly, I can use one of those. Fierce Growl. Can I take anything from you? No. Oh! Oh, oh, we're in a nightmare zone, aren't we? Uh I noticed that that water was green. What was that about? Whoa. Oh, that's a cool effect. Hold on, do that again, do that again. That is freaky. <laughs> I 
think I can theory how this developer did that. You have a, uh, a parallel event that, like, that, like, dims the lights, but, like, every few times it dims the lights, it, like, also changes all of these, like, shelves, which are just events, probably. I might steal this idea for a scare <laughs> in my own game. <laughs> There's always something really fun about trying to theorycraft how developers did this sort of thing. <laughs> I gotta tell you, there's some, like, there's some, like, people have told me that they're kind of impressed by, like, some of the, the concepts I, or some of the, like, visual effects I put in my game in reality. Like, it's just, just some, some kind of cool idea I had that I figured out how to make work. It's like, I had, like, a randomly dimming light effect for, like, this area that's kind of in... Ooh, <laughs> that's kind of like a kind of like a beaten up um like warehouse. And I think it looks kind of cool. Oh my god, I haven't seen you in ages, Jimmy. What are you doing up here? The platinum member Lynchian is downstairs. I'm o I always I'm always told I mispronounce that word. Well, you're here now. I suppose you've seen the X5 mo uh, mobile suppr uh, suppression unit. Are you surprised? Accelerated dynamics is more than just banking. We diversified into all sorts of enterprises, including military-grade weaponry. Jimmy, why are you looking at me like that? I used to dream of the first bank of grouse growing and growing. Well, my dream has evolved. We all evolved, Jimmy. It's what people do. The bank wasn't important at all. What matters is money. You see, money buys things, Jimmy. You don't just use it to buy your favorite snacks, you know. Money buys property. It buys influence. It buys power. It buys respect. Sometimes it buys people, too. I wouldn't expect you to understand. You're just a child, after all. You don't know what it means to be an adult. Is he a boss? I didn't really expect that. <laughs> but of course, none of the, that matters right now. I'm afraid I can't let you leave. You see, the X5 mobile suppressor unit is still a prototype. I can't have the information leaking, into, uh, leaking to my competitors. In situations like this, you have to, to weigh the pros and the cons. Will killing you weigh uh, my conscience? Yes, briefly. But if that inf information gets out, I could lose millions. It's a simple cost-benefit analysis. Please understand. Oh my god! Okay, what- This is not a normal fight. Uh, he's got a PC. We've got him. The last time we saw a number mechanic like that, the gimmick of the fight is you had to hit him a certain number of t or hit it a certain number of times. But there are two units here. This is going to be based around money, I can already tell. We'll start with... Do you have anything on you? Kind of surprised. Just start with that. Toxic you. That's not a lot of health. Oh, I was meant to do this way earlier, wasn't I? Regular attack adds interest. I think how this works is that number is building up to some big attack. a flat number in it each time, which is interesting. I'm gonna be honest, this is probably gonna kill. I think I'll look up what this boss's gimmick is after this, because <laughs> I think I came here way too late.
Yeah, okay, 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 let's... <clears throat> I'm gonna have to look up what the gimmick of that fight is later. <laughs> or right after this, I guess. Alright, you beat me, so what? I am suppo Am I supposed to learn some kind of lesson? I'll just take the financial hit and keep going. Let me teach you a lesson instead. You don't know what it's like to be a small man. When you're a small man, you spend each and every day alone with your small thoughts. You think, I should live a better in a better house, and that's it. It's just a thought. Money can make all, all, a small man into a big man. You think I should live in a better house, and then you buy it. A thought becomes reality. That's what money can do. As a small man becomes bigger and bigger, his thoughts become bigger, big thoughts, and he needs more money to make them real. People would respect me if this building were named after me. People would remember me if this monument lasted long after I died. The government would construct policies that favored my businesses if I donated to the right politicians. Don't you see, Jimmy? Money can help you shape the world in your image. I wouldn't expect you to understand. You're just a child, after all. Okay, you know, that is a good point. Like, this is, like... I do like this commentary here. Like, that is very true, where, like, some people just have way too much money for their own good, but, like, <laughs> this is not a concept I think an eight-year-old would understand, you know? Like, <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to understand. You're just a child. You haven't seen the time, uh, the time to live as a small man. Come here before you leave. Life insurance? <laughs> what? That's from our insurance division. It allows you to retain all your money if you lose a fight. You need to protect your assets, Jimmy, if you want to, uh, to amount to anything. It feels kind of late to be getting something like that. Like, I feel like if I'm going to die, I'll just saw for a set. That's interesting, I must say. Why do you continue to talk to me? Nothing will change. Go live your happy world of chil- Go live in the happy world of children. You don't belong here. This is a place for adults. I suppose you've earned the right to do that. Enjoy it while you can. Power anchored in physical strength is fleeting. <laughs> that might be the thumbnail. <laughs> President Ardust. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's look up what that fight was supposed to be played like. Mr. Cross is an optional boss fight at the end of Accelerator Dynamics. Only accessible after the player. Let's see. In battle, Grouse is assisted by a personal computer, an invincible enemy which adds his interest counter every turn. His interest counter starts at 100, but increases by 1.2 every turn, a maximum of 999. This counter shows Mr. Grouse's current attack stat, so his damage will go up as the battle goes on. Mr. Grouse also has an invisible MP counter which starts at 0 and can go up to 9999 as he steals MP from you. Okay, so this is... Well, one of the easier bosses... Okay, so that was meant to be kind of easy. If, if player is not prepared for the fight, it can easily get out of hand, as the interest counter continuously increases. Yeah, that... Honestly, this isn't, like, like directly a damage race fight in the same way that, like, the Doomsday Clock, or whatever that thing was called, it was, but, like, it definitely feels like it. Because, like, if he gets too powerful, you just can't do anything. Huh. That feels like a boss fight that's very tough to balance, because, like, it's either you're going to just beat him quickly or you're just going to lose. Oh, and here are the three, uh, treasures. There's the skyscraper. Take that off the list. Molecular Beam. That sounds like an Andrew attack if I've ever heard one. Wait. What is the MP cost on that? Because that just looks like a power crept vapor, uh, vapor blit, vaporize. 
That's gotta cost like a lot of MP or something. Oh, it does. It does. Okay. Okay. You know what? Hold on. Let's swap your equipment around a bit. Running out of MP is a constant issue for you. I feel like if I can just... Rejuvenate and first aid. Is 20 less defense or magical attack worth that? I'm gonna say no. I want to use this, but I feel like I'm gonna need a better loadout for it. God, the equipment in this game really catches you off guard, like how unique and interesting some of it is. Hyperdrive unit. That also sounds like a uh, thing for you. Install in a robot to see it run around all crazy and stuff. What? There's no way I did all that for something that just increases speed. No, it just increases agility, according to this chart I found. Okay. Yo, if I want to go all in with that speed strat with, with Jimmy... Also, I should probably take that off. Um, chainsaw. <laughs> Imagine R-Dust with a chainsaw. Nice, okay. That was a cool area. Uh, where to next? The Younger Miss Asp, a character from the Withering Lands. This this is a really early game area. I probably just completely skipped on this. Wait, no. Up here. The Younger Miss Mr. Asp. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. I just completely missed that one, I guess. Oh my god, get out of here. This one's different. Hold on. 
We gotta go back to Information Island for one of the furniture items. This actually wraps up like a like a story character quest I've wanted to for a while. Because I really like Timothy Mouse. There we go. I'm happy my journey has taken me... Oh, wait. Okay, it's saying to get the Silver Jimmy, you have to complete Cordelia's Mouse's quest. Complete the optional dungeon that unlocks under the Unbreakable Bridge after that quest. I've done that. Speak to Timothy Mouse on Information Island after defeating its boss. I think I've done that. Follow him to Miss Mouse's room and smile. Have I not done this? No, I have not done this. Uh... Oh, here we go. I don't know what to do. Mom hasn't been the same after Cordelia died. I mean, none of us have been, but I think her tiny little heart is finally couldn't take it anymore. Lately, she hadn't gotten out of bed in days. I don't remember the last time she's eaten. I'm afraid. I'm afraid she might not have long left. I wish there was a way I could tell Timothy, but who knows where he's at right now. What the hell is that sound effect? <laughs> What's that? My mom's sick. Oh. Jimmy, I know I said I was going to be on a big adventure and I was leaving Smile behind me. I've been into a lot of interesting places and I would love to see more, but all I want to do right now is go back home and see my mom. Does that make me weak? Does that mean I'm not cut out to be a real adventurer like you? I don't have time to think about this. Could you take me back to Smile? I need to make sure she's okay. I would have freaked out if you joined the party permanently there. <laughs> I really like Timothy Mouse. Like... <laughs> Why do you have a picture of information guy? Oh wait, wait, these are all the postcards! Oh my god! That's every location you could find him in! <laughs> She's been hanging them up! Idiot. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be out in the world. It's what you wanted. I said I had. I, I should have come home sooner. I had no idea it was this bad, and Cordelia. If I would have known, I would have come home immediately. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You need to get out. You're like your father. I'm nothing like him. It doesn't matter what I want to do, I could never le uh, leave like he did. Don't blame him. He just couldn't. I see us the same without her. I can't blame him for running away. No, it's not right. I hate him. Oh, you shouldn't. But maybe I do too. If he were here right now... Mom, calm down. You need to take things easy. Sonny, you care about things so, so much. More people should be like you. I should have been like you. Now you've got to... You need to take care of this place, for me. 
Mom, you're not... Beatrice, lean in closer. What is it, Mom? Watch over your sister for me. I know I can depend on you. I promise. Cordelia, Bethany, it's so good to see you. See your faces again. You were too frail for what for this world. I just couldn't admit I was too. Wow. Jimmy, thanks for being such a good friend through all this. I think my adventure is done for now. I had fun, but I don't want to just float around like my dad. I want to be a good person to the people I care about. Right now, it's my sisters. I hope you find what you're looking for in your journey, Jimmy. If you would have been a bit less stubborn, I would have... Or if I had been a bit less stubborn, I would have found what I was looking for right here in Smile. Anyway, here's a little souvenir I picked up in my adventure. I hope it reminds you of, a, of the good times we've had. There's the Silver Jimmy! Nice! Okay. Let's look at this again. The Abyss. That was the, the Mr. Cat dungeon. Let me look that up. Wait, what? Apparently this isn't this? Wait. The Abyss is only accessible through Blood Marsh. This is different. Well, let's see if we can find this then. That sounds fun. What is a memory zone too? Was there an area here earlier I, like, couldn't, like, access because I need a buck or something? Because that's the only thing that comes to mind. I don't remember a section like that. I could have sworn Abyss was the name of the Mr. Cat dungeon, but apparently not. 
No, that's this place is not that big, honestly. I am missing something. Wait a second. I looked at the image on the wiki. I probably wouldn't have noticed that. Well, I guess this is the abyss. Let's go in. There are two treasures here. I probably could have accessed this way earlier, because this that does that doesn't seem like anything that's really blocking me. Are the enemies even different? Let's let's find that out. I feel like we fought all of these before. missing one steel uh, thing or one steel uh, furniture and it's I don't think we've been to a place called Grimclaw's Dungeon so we'll have to see what that is later when I'm done with this episode I, I, I still can't do the Coliseum but I might spend some time grinding at the Shinryu Arcade because that is like an area with with several like exclusive um exclusive items including a couple furniture items that I kind of want Hold on this looks like that was a fork in the road Whoa I'm going to push ups Yeah go ahead and sit on not like much weight Can't shake him. Yeah, I feel like I could have gone here way earlier, too. Oh, that's freaky. <laughs> I'll working out. Not gonna stay all day. Like you. Isn't there like a semi-common fear of like eyes and holes? I don't know what that's called, but like it's the kind of thing that always like catches me off guard just how many people have it. <laughs> Huh? Let him me hold strong enough to. There's a screaming face. There's another item here, according to the guide. It just says left at the fork in the road, which could mean anything. Are the enemies even different? No, they're not even different. Okay, I guess this is just... Really? I can't run from this? Get out of here. The guy just says go left at a fork in the road, so I guess we'll just go backwards until we find it. I did go left at a fork.
Oh, whoops. That vine enemy looks like the, um... Ah, oh, what's that thing called? The Tangleweed, I think? That thing from Plants vs. Zombies that, like, drags zombies down and just insta-kills them? That thing kind of looks like that thing. I'm sticking to the left side of all these pathways, just in case. <laughs> at this rate, I probably could have just... Could have just started at the at the at the start area again. Oh my, it's up here, isn't it? Monster teeth. Oh, I could have used that way earlier. Ah, huh, all right. Well, alrighty then. Um, let's try to get one more. What about the bookshelf? That's also in the world library. It just says to the right of the periodicals section. Wait, is that it? Wait, do I already have it and it just didn't take it off my list? I did, okay. That was my bad. Hmm. Man, we're already at an hour. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave it off here. I think off screen I'll play around at the Shinryu Tower because it does feel like a place I can do right now. I'll see you folks later. Thanks for watching.